Mr. and Mrs. North, starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning. Take it away, boys. Lot 439, oil painting after B.G. LeBron, Florentine frame. Now, what should we say, uh, $10? $10. $10. $11. $11. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $
First, you pay $130 more than we can afford for a chest we don't need. Then, when you have a chance of more than doubling your money, you turn it down. Oh, it's, it's, it's pathological. Oh, you men, always thinking of the profits, the beautiful things in life pass you by. Well, I think those 500 smackers you might have made are beautiful things. $130 in the publishing business the way it is today. Oh. Look at those carved cupids. Aren't they beautifully executed? No, but I'm in favor of it. I think that thing's a monstrosity. You, you could have got a perfectly nice modern cedar chest for $70 at any department store in New York. Yes, but that wouldn't be moth-proof, worm-proof, waterproof, and bulletproof. What? The auctioneer. He, he claimed it was all those things. Oh, I'll bet that's the delivery man with the key. Thank you very much. See, I was right. I didn't have a chance to open it before the auction. I hope it isn't mildewy. Bargain is obviously not bodyproof, Doc. Jerry, look, I think it's her. Who? The girl at the shop who made me the offer. It is. Yes, I recognize her bracelet. The four-leaf clover. Poor creature. She must have wanted this chest pretty badly to pay for it with her life. Lieutenant Wagon, homicide. Right, right. What's he say, Bill? Grace Wilson was killed around 6.30. Someone gave her one blow on the back of the head with a heavy object. Probably one of those silver candlesticks sold at the auction. Come on, have your coffee, Bill. Well, whatever it was, she never knew what hit her. It was 6.30. It was after the auction was over. Wonder why she disguised herself with that black wig. Oh, well, that's obvious. She was afraid someone at the sale might recognize her. You see, she was a well-known showgirl. And that emerald bracelet was worth at least five grand. Now, Legs must have been playing the right horses lately to be able to give her that. Seems to me you've got a lot of questions to ask him, Bill. Correct, Pam. He's my first official port of call. Oh, Bill! Hmm? Oh, would you mind helping Jerry move that chest back before you leave? Okay. Oh, for Pete's sake, Pam, you can't keep this gruesome bit of lumber. Look, it's got a blood stain in the corner. Oh, dear, I'll have to scrub it out with ink eradicator. <laughs> That's funny. There's a vitamin capsule in the corner. I didn't know they used vitamins to restore old furniture. You know, wait a minute. This isn't a pill. It's a plastic container. Now, what for? Well, here, look. Diamonds. Ten to one, they're smuggled. Jerry, give me that cake knife. Just as I thought. It's got a trick bottom. Oh, so that's why Grace Wilson wanted the chest. Whoever murdered her dropped this on his way out. No wonder Legs can afford emeralds if he's gone into the diamond smuggling racket. Jerry, I've got an idea. I don't want to hear it. All right, what is it? Well, if we made an unofficial call to the antique shop, we might save Bill some time. Oh, honey, haven't you had enough excitement for one evening? Besides, it's none of our business. Well, it certainly is my business when a chest I pick up at a sale is delivered with a body I didn't buy. Jerry, the little girl has a legitimate complaint. But you better go with her. The place will be closed. And well, you don't know your wife if you think a trivial thing like a locked door is going to keep her out. Yeah, she was born with a skeleton key in her mouth. Yeah, now listen, you two. Whatever happens, don't mention anything about the jewels. One person's already in the freezer because of them. Yeah. Come on. Mr. Stulek, it was a natural mistake. What's natural about it? Now look. One Cassoni chest from Casa Italia, Torino, to Henry Latimer, 5602 Park Avenue, New York City. But if you remember, sir, before you went away, you told me there were no special shipments expected until next week. This arrived on the Volcania four days ago. After I'd signed for it, I put it in with the regular stuff for our monthly sale, as a matter of course. What oh, can't it be at this time of night? Did you leave the light on in the front of the shop? No, sir. Oh, well, then get rid of whoever it is. I'll call Latimer and see if I can make my peace. Can't lose my best customer.
Good evening, Mr. Latimer. It's Tulik, about the Cassoni chest. I would like to see you as soon as possible. Will you be in tonight? Very well. I'll be there. Mr. Stulik, it's the lady who bought the chest. And her husband. What a strange coincidence. Mr. Wilkie and I were just discussing your purchase. I'm Audrey Stulik, owner of this shop. Will you please sit down? Chairs, please. Thank you. Mm, thank the you. fact is, Mrs. North, there was a mistake about that chest. It was imported for the private buyer. It shouldn't have been put on sale at all. I would be happy to buy it back. Including the body inside it? I beg your pardon? Did you say body? She did. A dead body? Yes, a girl. Oh, I confess myself stunned. This is the most astounding thing I ever heard. Do you know anything about this, Mr. Wilkie? No, absolutely not. Did you open the chest before you put it onto the sale, Mr. Wilkie? I'm afraid I didn't. And it must have been done between the docks and delivery here. Oh, but that's quite impossible. You see, the corpse was alive this afternoon. You talked to her, Mr. Wilkie. I did? We both did. It was the lady who wanted to buy it from me. She's a gangster's mall. Uh, Lake Sherman's girl. Do you mind if I have one of your cigarettes? Why, of course. My nerves are a little wobbly. I don't wonder. What lovely cigarettes. They're French, aren't they? Yes. Galois Bleu. They always make me think of our honeymoon in Paris. Montmartre with its open-air cafes and, and funny little studios and the Rue de Rivoli and the Bois. Oh, for and... Pete's sake, Pam, stop talking like a travel folder. <laughs> uh, the point is, Mr. Stulik, we really came here to ask what uh, compensation you're prepared to offer. For what? Involving us in this murder. But, my dear sir, I'm not involved. I've been attending a series of furniture sales in Boston. I returned here tonight, arriving at Grand Central at five past seven. By the time I got here, your chest had already left the premises. That is true. As far as I'm concerned, Mr. North, after the sale, I gave orders to the delivery man, and then I slipped out for a sandwich. When I returned, the chest was already on its way to you. Well, then I can see only one explanation. While Mr. Wilkie was having his sandwich, Grace Wilson must have sneaked in here through the back window, knocked herself on the head, and locked her own dead body in the chest. I don't think that rings quite true, dear, do you? Come along, darling. The police will probably be here any minute now. Oh, dear. Oh, what a lovely piece of airplane luggage. Much too light to carry on a train. Au revoir, Mrs. Stulick. You'll be hearing from our lawyer. Good night. Thank you, thank you very much. I'm sorry to have bothered you. You're welcome. Darling, my hunch was right. I knew at the moment I spotted that sticker. A Mr. Stulik was a passenger on the four o'clock plane from Boston. He arrived at LaGuardia at 5.15. That gave him plenty of time to get to the shop around six when Mr. Wilkie was out to dinner. Well, that still doesn't make him the killer. Well, maybe not, but he might be involved with the smuggling. Maybe he and Meg Sherman were working together. Don't get so excited, darling. Come on, sit down and relax and have your drink. Nope, we're going out again. Oh, no, where now? Well, while I was talking like a travel folder, I was really distracting Mr. Stulick and reading his order blank. There was an item there that said the Cassoni chest was for Mr. Henry Latimer, 5602 Park Avenue. I think we should go slumming there. Well, I think we should do nothing more to build telephones. Don't be supine, darling. Time and crime wait for no man. Yes, dear. You're breaking my heart. Uh, you'd rub out your own mother if there was 50 grand at stake. And the rocks in that chest were worth every bit of that. I don't know anything about any rocks. My line is horses. Yeah, but horses don't always run true to form. Now, oh, maybe you needed a, a little extra money to pay for Grace's jewels. Now, how's this, Legs? You knew there were diamonds in that chest. You sent Grace Wilson down to get them. And then somehow you found out that she planned to cross you up. So you followed her, grabbed the sparks, and then killed her. And you searched this place high and low. You haven't found any, have you? Where are you around 6.30? I was walking Grace's poodle in the park. 
Who can prove that? The poodle? Good evening. Are you Mr. Latimer? I am. Our name is North. Uh, by mistake, we bought a Cassoni chest that was ordered for you. Oh, yes. Mr. Stulick phoned me about it. Do come in. My, what an enchanting room. What lovely things you have. Why, that's a genuine can of letter, isn't it? You must be quite a connoisseur, Mrs. North. Yes, that came from the Duke of Abruzzi's collection. Oh, thrilling. But what staggers me, Mr. Latimer, is why you should want the Cassoni. The Cassoni's only a reproduction. I have a wicked sense of humor. And sometimes it amuses me to pass up a reproduction as genuine. Now, you are prepared to sell me the chest, aren't you? Well, if you don't mind it being a little soiled. You see, since my wife bought it, it's acquired a little stain on the inside. Yes, somebody carelessly parked a dead body in it. Indeed, how fabulous. That makes me all the more anxious to buy it. Oh? Why? Well, I have a penchant for the macabre. Most of my treasures have sinister associations. In fact, my friends call this room my black museum. <laughs> This goblet, for instance, once belonged to the Borgias. The poison went into a hollow stem and was released through a secret spring. How oh, creepy. <laughs> the timepiece on the mantel is one of the most unique things in my collection. It formerly decorated the bedroom of that notorious murderess, the Marquis de Brinvilliers. I know, the poisoner. Oh, Jerry, isn't it horrible to think that this clock was actually ticking away while the Marquis writhed in agony from the brew she gave him? I don't know where you acquire so much useless information, darling. <laughs> Does it still go, Mr. Latimer? Uh, don't touch it. Uh, the mechanism is in perfect condition, but it is very delicate, and I allow no one to touch it but myself. Oh, yes, timepieces are very temperamental. I think watchers are allergic to me. They always stop dead when I want to know the time. Now let us talk about your Italian chest. What are you prepared to take with Mr. North? Well, uh, that's just the point. We, we don't know quite what to do. You see, after the police removed the body, Mrs. North, quite by accident, discovered that the chest, well, like your Borgia goblet, had a secret compartment. Indeed. Yes, we found a pill full of diamonds in it. Bam! I think the customs office will be very interested, Mr. Latimer, that a chest you ordered contained smuggled stones. You'll have to do something about it. That's just what we intend to do, Mrs. North. Sit down. You do, Mr. Morris. You made a tragic mistake when you learned how to talk, ma'am. Fool, I told you to stay out of sight. But they know about the stuff. Put that gun away. There's one corpse too many as it is. Please do tell me. Which one of you is the murderer? Shut up. I echo that, Mr. Stulick. But I really am interested academically. Of course, you're the brains behind this syndicate, Mr. Latimer. Isn't it an awful strain on a man your age to be outwitting the law? You should retire and spend the rest of your life in a nice, quiet jail. I have no intention of going to jail, Mrs. North. It's not my fault if jewels were concealed in a chest meant for me. I had nothing to do with it. It's Mr. Stulick and his European associates who are responsible. You're not going to hide behind me, Latimer. Why not? That's what fronts are for, aren't they? <laughs> this gallows woman is not as dumb as she pretends to be. These two know too much. We've got to shut them up for good. And what do you plan to do with our bodies? Buy two more chests? You're quite right, Mr. North. Mr. Stulick is much too hasty. Now, I suggest we take you for a little trip on my yacht to discuss ways and means. Ah, we've got no time for ocean voyages. Oh, thank goodness. I could never go yachting dressed like this. Uh, some other time, Mr. Latimer. Really, if you'll excuse us, we must be going now. Say where you are. We've got to do something this minute. The police are probably at my shop now. That idiot Wilkie will tell them the chest was ordered for you. Then they'll drive on here. Well, that clears up one point, Pam. Wilkie is innocent of this murder. Yes, Mr. Sulek, that's where you made your fatal error. You were too greedy. You should have cut Wilkie in on your racket. I think you stalled quite long enough for time, Mrs. North. You will go with Mr. Stulick to the service elevator. And this time, Andre, you have my permission to shoot if they try any tricks. Come on. Give me that gun, Stulick. 
Put up your hands and get over there. The rest of you, up with them too. Listen, Latimer, you killed Grace. I had nothing to do with it, Legs. You caught her going after the stuff and you rubbed her out. Don't be a fool. I was nowhere near that shop. I was uh, dining at the Connoisseur's Club, and I can prove it. I don't believe you. I think he's telling the truth. I don't know where you come in, lady, but keep out. Well, I know where you come in, though, Legs Sherman. I don't want to see you kill the wrong man. That gentleman is much more likely to have done it. You see, he has a false alibi for the time of the crime. My wife's quite right. He said he returned from Boston by train. He didn't. He arrived by plane and plenty of time to commit the murder. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. Good advice. We'll take care of your revenge for you by proxy. Thank goodness you're here, Bill. How did you happen to find us? We tail legs. You know, that was quite an interesting conversation we uh, overheard in the hallway. Very smart of you, Pan, to egg them on to fight amongst themselves. I gather you own the antique shop where the girl was killed. Take them away, boys. I only regret that I didn't finish you off, too. Au revoir. You can go, Legs, but I'll want you for questioning. What about? Who tipped you off that there was a consignment in that chest? The Amsterdam bunch? You got a nerve. And apparently you're losing yours. You send your own girl to do your hijacking these days. You can't tie me in with that mob and you know it. You've got nothing on me. Just a matter of time. And now all we need to cage this bird is to find the eggs in this basket. Can you help me, Jerry? Delighted. If you can search till doomsday, you'll find nothing. Oh, yes, we will. I know exactly where they are. Mr. Latimer seemed terribly concerned about this clock. I'll bet this envelope is full of pills. Why, you little ferret, you. Now, how in blazes did you know that, Pam? Are you psychic? Mr. Latimer isn't as smart as he thinks he is. In the first place, he was scared to death I touched the clock. And then when he said it was in perfect working order, I noticed it had stopped a half hour before. That's right. The hands are still at 10.15. That would be just about the time Stuhl had got here ahead of us. All right, Latimer, that's the end of your importing business. Come along with me. You'll be formally charged. Oh, wait a minute, Bill. Mr. Latimer, you won't need to tell the time while you're doing time. Uh, so would you sell me the clock? It'll just match my chest. I'm afraid I don't deal with amateurs, Mrs. North. I still think it was a goodbye, don't you? Even though it has given us sort of a nerve-wracking evening. Yeah, I can do without it. Come on, let's put it back in the place next to the wall. Okay. Jerry, I'm sure I heard something move in there. Oh, nonsense. But I did. It was sort of a scratching noise. Do you think it could be Grace Wilson's ghost? I think this evening has turned your mind. You open it. I can't bear to. And look. <laughs> I told you this chest was a washout. It isn't even cat proof. <laughs> yeah. Mr. and Mrs. North is directed by Ralph Francis Murphy. A John W. Loveton production. Produced by Federal Telefilms. Starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning, featuring Francis DeSales. This has been a film presentation.